my journey with breast cancer wasn't an easy one. When I look back and now, somehow I can say it was a blessing in disguise. There was so much in me that I didn't know I had. Having breast cancer made me discover a new me. I, Arabiri, Betty, Anyamu Akiridolu. I'm a breast cancer survivor of 20 years and still counting. Breast cancer is the commonest cause of cancer-related mortality among Nigerian women. Due to the poor image of the disease in our nation, lack of information and policy failure, breast cancer is not yet receiving the much-deserved attention. Nigeria, with a population of 170 million people, needs 175 radiology centers. Presently, the country only has seven which perform very poorly. The absence of a national cancer policy is fueling the neglect of breast cancer as a public health issue, leaving cancer patients basically on their own. The fear is palpable that breast cancer is a killer disease. Many women suffer in silence, a silence born out of the fear of discovery. But all that is changing as women in Nigeria are rising up and owning their voice. They're beginning to speak out, to fight back, to reclaim their voices. For Arabiri Betty Akeredolu, the journey began 20 years ago. Survivors. On that fateful morning, I, I was having a bath and my, my right hand just, you know, you're having your bath, it just um, scrubbing, and then I just felt a bump on my left breast. Of course, I paused, given that it wasn't as if I was ignorant of breast cancer. I've heard about it while in the university. I've also read about it. A lot of things were running riot in my head. Could this be breast cancer? Am I going to die? My kids were so young. My baby, my, dad, my last boy, was in nursery. That was my most concern. So I was just there in my bed, rolling over, and there. This program was on Sky, Sky Channel. And it was about breast cancer and Johnny of breast cancer survivors. Up to now, I can't explain the actions that I took. I didn't go to someone that was familiar to us. Naturally, you will go to your family doctor. I didn't go to a family doctor. I went to an alumnus. There was this connection. And I asked her to check me. She checked. But because that wasn't her own area, she had to refer me to the, the real place that I should be, and that's outpatient surgery. But she confirmed that was a lump. So she now gave me this note. Oh, well, you know, um, that will be referral now to outpatient the Department of Surgery. So, of course, I went there, 
they, they now, they, of course, they took the paper and uh, the referral note, opened a case file for me, and then now directed me to a doctor that will now, you know, do the need for. And of course, he asked me, he examined me and everything, confirmed that there was a lump. But, you know, you can't just assume that what is in there was breast cancer. That will be for that test. They have to do some other test and so on. It's after that, that, that test, they call it needle biopsy. After the biopsy, the results showed malignant lumps and a mastectomy, a surgical procedure involving the removal of the affected breasts, was recommended. Dr. Adisa is a general consultant and surgeon at the Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching Hospital, Ife. We asked him to explain the procedure. Obtaining a histopathologic confirmation where a part of that lump is taken for examination is compulsory. Um, we must have a confirmation, a scientific evidence that abnormal cells, cancerous cells were seen. If that is seen, then there are different modalities of treatment uh, for breast cancer. Operation can involve removing a part of the breast or the whole of the breast. Uh, a part of it is only removed when the lump is detected at a very early stage. Uh, if it is not very, very early, if only a part of the breast is removed, there are chances that the residual part of that breast may bring recurrence of the cancer. So when we see women presenting early, um, the option of removing the breast and reconstructing the breast is open for those presenting early. And that is why this issue of awareness leading to early detection and early presentation is to the benefit of the patient. The result of the biopsy confirmed that it was cancerous. But so after the cable um, program, I had made up my mind. So I was kind of prepared. I got home and I told my husband. He was with me all the way. Even when it became um, inevitable that I must do mastectomy. Um, the doctors were, were not comfortable to break the news. But I saw it on their faces. That, you know, when you do the biopsy, then it confirms that it's cancerous. What next? You do the mastectomy, as at that time, it has to be. I looked at their faces, I knew. I turned to my husband and I said, darling, if they remove this one, you play with the other. That was how I broke the ice. They were not comfortable. In fact, it was later on they said, Betty, you didn't know what you did to us. You just removed that body from our shoulders. Because time and time again, women are told that you have to remove your breasts to live. They will run away. And they now come when things are out of hand. Then you of what use? What are you doing with diseased breasts? And I said, if, if that's what it takes for me to remain alive, please take it off. The main reason, I have to live. I have to be here and raise my children. It's usually a tough um, call when you have to tell a woman that she has cancer. Um, usually I don't like to do it, but sometimes it's just something you have to do. So the first thing is most women are in denial. They just stare, go quiet, and then just look at you. And they're trying to process the whole information. And then they get angry that why me why did it have to happen to me they ask a lot of questions is it sin 
Is this something I did? Is it a lifestyle? And then they begin to come to terms with it. Then they accept this. But between that denial and, and anger period, a lot of things can happen. A woman may say, well, there's nothing there, so I'm, I'm not going to do anything about it. Or seek other, you know, alternative treatment. Try herbs, try prayers, try everything and neglect the um, expertise that you know they have in doctors so but women who accept quickly and I have that support family support do extremely well in other parts of the world breast cancer has also been noticed to be on the increase as it is in Nigeria however the mortality from breast cancer has been drastically reduced in other parts of the world because of early detection. Uh, like every other cancer, if cancer is detected early and treatment is instituted at that early uh, stage, the chances of achieving cure is much, much higher. And one of the reasons why it's a leading cause of mortality among Nigerian women is because the majority of women in every hospital in Nigeria present with late stage of the disease. I knew that if you, if you leave this lump, it continues to grow and be progressing to other stages that, 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 will, that will even take your life. And before you go for surgery, you know, the, the, the drug that will put you to sleep they usually test it to make sure it's compatible with you. That had been done. But on the day of my surgery, it, it, it finished. So there was, there was an issue. Will they now give me another one that they had not tested the compatibility? We didn't know what to do. But the decision has to be mine, whether I should continue or not. I said, let them go ahead. Of course, the next thing I, I, I had was when I, I looked up, I had come back. And I you know, hear the sutures and so on going on and so on. After her recovery, Mrs. Akeri deluded something significant. She decided she would not be part of the collective silence on breast cancer. Armed with her new knowledge, she embarked on a mission to change the widespread perception that breast cancer is a death sentence and has no cure. It was a big thanksgiving for me. Um, I, I realized upon getting to the hospital that people were I didn't I didn't know not until I was diagnosed of breast cancer I didn't know that anybody anywhere around me or close to me ever had this disease like most of all you, you read about these things and you never thought that it could come close so I never knew until I got there so you can it got it got to the usage I so there was nothing like a group you can, you know, call upon or somebody who had passed through that experience that you could draw strength from her. There was nothing. I was alone. I never, also, I never knew that breast cancer progresses with time until I got to use it. So there, you can come in with just a lump and it's breast cancer and you have your uh, surgery and leave. But there are ones that come in in terrible stages. Their breasts blown out, some fungating, you can't even stand the stench. And I wondered, you mean this is breast cancer? And somebody will just, I said, what were they thinking? I said, no, I won't keep quiet. I, I met Right there, I told my counselor that, I said, I don't think I'll keep quiet. Now that I know that if you don't do anything, this is where you will be. There and then, 
the seed was planted in her heart for what would become the Breast Cancer Association of Nigeria, a leading non-profit organization galvanizing action to end breast cancer in Nigeria through public education, patient support, and advocacy and research. Founded in 1997, the Breast Cancer Association of Nigeria, Brecon, is increasingly improving the lives of many touched by breast cancer who would have succumbed to the disease due to ignorance and lack of support. When I met her, actually, we, we clicked and we became uh, quite close during the Bring Back Our Girls uh, period. And uh, we were the ones that were doing the square sitting out and all the walking, trying to raise awareness about the plight of these our young girls. And when I met her, her I saw in her somebody who is a very determined person. She's focused and whatever she's passionate about, she will go all out for it. In fact, I call her anti bulldozer. She'll make sure that she uses everything within her power to make sure that whatever she lays her hands on will come to pass. Uh, there is no, it's not possible in her dictionary. It has to be done and you must do it. And I wonder how she copes. At least before, I used to wonder how she copes. And now that she's putting the first lady of Undo State uh, chores into her daily routine, I wa she doesn't sleep. The break and passion in her is something that anybody who has foresight, who knows the, what cancer does to a family, it scatters family, it breaks family. It hurts family. You will not wish it for your enemy. And that's exactly what she's doing. She's making sure that this cancer, cancer scourge that's all over is brought to a minimum. She's a very intelligent woman, very committed, very hardworking. She's committed to her cause, what she believes in and she believes in service to humanity. She believes that no woman should die in her productive age because of breast cancer. She believes in early detection and presentation. She believes in teamwork. You see, you need to see her break down. Anytime she hears that a young woman in her productive years, you know, or a young woman uh, who is supposed to be alive, taking care of her husband, children, fall down to breast cancer. She feels so bad. She, she can be very, very emotional when it comes to that. But she will say, this thing could have been prevented if this particular person, you know, pre uh, dictated early and presented early. When I started, nobody wanted to, you know, be identified with this organization because of the name Breast Cancer Association of Nigeria. Everybody thought if you're a member of Breast Cancer, you have breast cancer, but that's not true. It all started because I couldn't get somebody that had the same experience with me because they were not ready to show their faces to the public. Rather, my friends rallied around me. And it wasn't like I always say, it wasn't as if they wanted to change the world, you understand? It's just they wanted to support a friend. And that was how we trudged on and kept on. Survivors. This is a Keridolu survival story now spans two decades of breast cancer activism. Her story is a huge source of hope and inspiration to other women who have come in contact with her through the activities of her non-profit organization, Brecan. I got to know about Brecan from my doctor in Dubai, Dr. Huria Kazim. And she told me about Brecken, that Brecken seems to be the only support group that she knows. 
that is solid in Nigeria. Then on my own, I googled and found out Brecon was in Ibadan. And I live in Abuja. The proximity will make it impossible. So what I began to do was to begin to read about Arabiri, um, Akiri Dulu on the internet, her survival, sheep and everything. And everything about her inspired me, at least. It made me know that if she could survive, I can also survive. When my mom heard about a mastectomy surgery, when, when the doctor tried to explain to her that it's a removal of the breast, she just broke down. She broke down completely. Like, it has never happened in her family. That she has never heard, of, heard about it. So she actually told the doctor that, Doctor, can you take out one of my breasts and heart joint to the one you're removing? I just started crying. The doctor, the doctor just shed a tear like motherhood. The doctor actually said, no ma, we can't do it. Coming to Brecon is a great pleasure. It's an honor to be part of Brecon. Cancer is a challenge that you have more to life. You have more to live. Cancer doesn't define me and there's no pain in my scar. There's no shame in my scar. It is just a starting point. Indeed, there is no pain in a scar, only a story of courage, a strong desire for life and a refusal to be defined by the negative experience. When I was diagnosed, oh my word, am I going to die? Actually, I wouldn't have known that I had cancer. Yes, the lump wasn't in the breast. It wasn't in the breast. That was just a kind of, um, I can say like, a growth on top of my right breast, towards the armpit. And um, I didn't take cognizance of it because it was not, it was not pain, paining me. It was painless. I first came in contact with Brecken in 2014. I wrote to mommy about my treatment, telling her what happened, the diagnosis, the everything and everything. And they came to my aid. Even when I was in the hospital, Brekanite came to encourage me. You know, to greet me, brought food for me, brought money and everything. And mommy also supported me through Beck Breaker for the treatment. So I felt needed. I shouldn't die. I'm loved. I shouldn't die. 2014, I was diagnosed of breast cancer. And I had a mastectomy. After the surgery, I was going through treatments. When my husband was, then my husband was just going all around the place trying to see solutions, get uh, help because the expenses for the treatment were so high and somehow he got in touch with uh, Mrs. Betty Akeredo Anyang. It's awesome to hear that one could go through such an experience and for 20 years or more still stands out there to say I'm a survivor. For the past 20 years, all the works she has been doing, all the awareness she has been creating to make sure that people know about breast cancer and how to stay away from it and how to tackle it and how to fight it. And I tell you, we are learning from it. We are learning a lot from it. I will tell you, I'm stronger now. I can, I can say a lot to people who need encouragement because I'm in Brecon. After mastectomy, in fact, before removing a woman's breast, this is where organizations like Brecon have been very, very useful for us. I remember 10 years ago, if I were to do a mastectomy on a woman, I would introduce her to Arabian Akiri Dulu and she would call the patient, she would advise them, she would tell them, I went through this, this is how I survived it. So gradually we also built up um, 
some survival groups around us here who many of them are working with Brecon today and many women that are about to undergo mastectomy uh, speak to these women and they are encouraged seeing those who have gone through this uh, there are some women talk, there are things women say to themselves that a male doctor may not even be able to, how did your husband react, how did you cope with it? So there are survival groups like Brecon that have helped women over the years to be able to go through this. There must be few Nigerians sitting down and saying, this thing is happening, it's unacceptable, what are we going to do? cannot afford to continue losing our women because of a disease that is treatable and even curable. So we should be able to educate our women and break our members, they've already they've un undertaken that task without anybody asking them. Our own benefit is that fulfillment that because of our activities, because of our actual lives are saved, period. The journey of the last 20 years has not been without challenges. However, Mrs. Akeridolu has demonstrated extraordinary courage in leading Brecon, never wavering in her commitment to end breast cancer. With activities like the World Cancer Day, Breast Health Awareness Outreach and the Innovative Jump for Life, Brecon is succeeding in breaking down the walls of secrecy and stigmatization. We organize Jump for Life just to make sure that our presence is felt. So we're just doing it within ourselves. Until ShopRite came along. ShopRite. What could you have done with our shop right? We were organizing Jock for Life October in Ibado. Just in Ibado. Where we started with less than maybe 50 people. Because we, we used a woman, a notable woman, a woman that could draw attention seeing her jogging on the street. So we started with the wife of the governor of Oyo State, Lam Adishina, Mrs. Lam Adishina. And we have continued in that state. Jog for life, or even more, race for life. Speak out and be heard, because there's nothing more powerful than our collective voices to defeat the scourge of cancer. People should learn to speak out. People should learn, because it's in speaking sometimes that you get the solutions. You know, you hide it, it keeps you there. Even when there's a solution, you wouldn't know. I'm celebrating my survivorship. I'm celebrating the fact that every day for me is celebration. I'm a survivor today because mine was detected early and cancer is no death sentence. NGOs like this, they reach the grassroots faster than government. The bureaucratic the uh, pathway of government is not there in NGOs. Government must recognize the importance of NGOs and give them the enabling environment to support them because they are actually doing government's job for them. And on the long run, it's the nation collectively that benefits from it. Because if the burden of cancer is so much reduced, then government can concentrate on other things. 
the scientific world we live in today uh, is based on evidence. Research is so important. We have observed that many of our women are presenting at very young ages. The way forward is for us to be able to uh, conduct our research locally and disseminate our own, I mean, say our own story, have our own evidence, be able to formulate our own policies. We need to do a lot of education. We need to do a lot of awareness and in languages that they, they understand. Apart from that, apart from, you know, raising awareness all over the place, we also want to be instrumental to having a structured screening program, structured population screening program. And we can start at the state level. Then, of course, it's time to mobilize people into action. Because we are going to lay emphasis on community engagement. Brecon is expanding to the nooks and crannies of Nigeria. More chapters are being created to reach more women in Nigeria. The newly established Ondo State chapter will cater to the needs of women in Ondo states where awareness is still low. We are spreading. We now have um, eight chapters right now and uh, we have seven chapters that are really uh, active. Seventy percent of people that reside in Lagos don't really know what breast cancer is or any cancer at all is. So there's a big need to create awareness. Especially those people that live in the hinterlands in Lagos. These are the grassroots people. That is what Brecon stands for. We are here to spread the cancer message to everybody that needs to, that has to hear, be needs to hear about it. We want new crop of Nigerian women that have this self-awareness about what is happening around them. Not just only about how the society treats them, but also issues that affect them like health and again for our women to also listen to that our mantra that you should check your breast every month if you notice any your usual change go to hospital because if you do so you're familiar with the look and feel of your breast and it enables you to detect any change and it's, there's also that likelihood that at that point in time is the early stage. Your chances to survive greatly enhanced. When people talk about breast cancer as a death center, I say, no, who are the people giving breast cancer that bad name? Breast cancer doesn't kill if you do the right thing at the right time. survivors. The survival of women is the survival of a race and any threat to the survival of women is a threat to the human race. Everyone has a stake. Be breast aware. Spread the message. Join the fight and save our women from dying at the peak of their productive years.